welcome back to the Dividend Diplomats YouTube channel. You know you're rolling with my boy Bert and Lanny, your favorite dividend investing channel, the Dividend Diplomats. And guys, we're here to be transparent yet again, showing you where we put our money and showing you the stocks we bought this past week of April 4th. Smash that subscribe button, everybody. Give us that thumbs up. Just knock those things out here before we get into our stock purchases. We appreciate it. We are on the road to 13,000 subscribers, but we're going to be on the road to 14, then 50, then 16, up to 20,000 subscribers. So everybody, thank you very much for your help in advance. We appreciate it. To your point, Lanny, we are transparent with our purchases. When we have significant purchases in a week, we like to put our money where our mouth is. We talk about stocks on our channel. We like to show that we aren't just saying them just to get views, just to get subscriptions on our channel. We are actually buying these companies. And that's the fun of it right here. That is the name of the game. You know, obviously you, you guys do know we love dividend investing. We do this for the love of the game. We do it for the community here because we want to help you find undervalued stocks, but also show you that hey, this is what we are doing on that journey to financial freedom. We are investing in the dividend stocks to build that passive income stream from dividend income. So guys, this past week of April 4th, still a lot of volatility. Student loan moratorium was officially you know, in the books. The Fed with a 50 basis point increase could be coming up in May. Obviously, things are still all over the place, right, B? Mortgage rates are climbing quickly. It's insane. I see 30 years are over 5% once again. Like they're way over, right? Yeah, it's not that you know, really tracks the 10-year treasury. And if you kind of stay in tune to that, yeah, mortgage rates on 30 years are well over 5% now, sadly. I mean, even a 15 year is now over 40% because probably three to four months ago, you were able to get a 30-year probably maybe around 275. Uh, maybe a 15 year at around that 2% to two and a quarter. So guys, rates are skyrocketing at the moment, which, hey, let's see if it cools down the real estate market, which has been on a boom the last three years. Yep, rates go up, pr housing prices go down so people can afford the houses. But we're not here to talk about the housing market and some of the other items. We're here to talk about those dividend stock purchases. So Lanny, your list is a lot longer than mine this week. I didn't have the best week of purchases. So my list is short. Let's dive into yours here because you and your wife absolutely crushed it this week. You put a lot of money from the sidelines into the market and grew your dividend income. I'm excited for you to talk about your list and I'm sure everybody's excited to hear it. Kick this off, Lanny. Yeah. And you know, sometimes these purchases do look large, but you have to think sometimes we don't put out videos on our purchases because possibly those weeks were a little cooler. So sometimes the capital doesn't all get deployed in a single week. So that usually sometimes compounds and then there might be one bigger week. Yeah. Um, and if you haven't, definitely watch the video from last week where I talked about three cheap and undervalued dividend stocks to buy, because guess what? I bought not one, not two, but all three of those stocks on that dang video. Boom. So, all right, you, Lanny, have your weekly purchase strategy for everybody that doesn't know. Lanny and I each buy certain fund on the Monday, every week we invest the same amount. It's a consistent investing strategy. It's been a blast watching these positions grow and watching the dividend income grow from it. So Lanny, tell us about your Monday purchases from this week. Yeah. So you guys, you remember my dividend dilemma? Well, let's just say I'm sticking with Vanguard's high dividend yield ETF, BYM. And we still bought our same two shares on Monday, April 4th. And we but actually, for the first time in a long time, my wife and I got them at the same price at $112.57. You know, we put out about $450 in capital into VYM, added approximately $12.40 at a yield of a flat 2.75%, Bert. Boom. Love it. Happy you stuck with VYM. That was a great debate we had in that dilemma video. So please watch it, everybody, if you haven't. You also have that blog article where you talk about how this VYM position over the years has grown significantly and you're getting well over $1,000 annually in dividend income from this investing strategy. That's right. It's all about building that passive income stream. But Bert, let me tell you something. I wasn't done yet on April 4th because 
you guys remember I was buying store capital each and every week. I crossed the 200 shares threshold. Thanks to you, YouTubers, giving us all the videos, um, you know, the thumbs up on the video. Um, so I actually switched gears and grabbed a stock I bought, I think during the pandemic, it was a very small position. It's boring. They're involved in the energy utility industry, helping build more of that infrastructure. MDU Resources Group, ticker symbol is MDU. Gotta love it, keeping it simple. Um, bought it at $26.27, 10 shares. So $262.70, adding a nice flat $8.70 at a yield of just above 3.3%. So with your weekly purchases, lady, $21, just over a hair over added from that on that Monday on that is how you start the week off in style right there. I'm ready for my close-up, Bert. All right, Bert, but guess what? You guys still did something consistently on that Monday. Johnson & Johnson, ticker symbol, J&J. &J. We have been buying that one share every week for the last year or so. As you saw in our last video, I thought about replacing Johnson & Johnson with Pepsi, but we didn't. We're still sticking with Johnson & Johnson for the short term until we find another dividend king that looks and has as great a metrics as J&J. &J. So my wife and I each grabbed Johnson & Johnson just over 176. She beat me this week. She bought one share at 176 and 5 cents. Me, I added one share at 176.34. We didn't get it first thing in the morning. We bought it in the afternoon this week. So it was an interesting week there. Each added $4.24 to our four dividend income. In total, $8.48. But you know it's going to be exciting, Lainey. Finally. I'm going to get to update the dividend in this chart here soon because Johnson & Johnson is set to announce that dividend increase here in the coming weeks for April. We have a vested interest in Johnson & Johnson announcing another stellar dividend increase. So let's go, J&J. &J. Bart, if you get a 7% plus banger, your income is going to fly considering you bought shares at least every week. And I know there are some weeks where you bought a lot more than just the one share each. Yeah, you guys are going to see me do a backflip, and we'll see how much how that's going to work. Bert, if you do a backflip, right when you come up, I'm stone cold stunning you through a table, probably. Hey, that's fine. If I can land it, I don't care what's going to happen. So that's going to be it right there. So, all right. That was our Monday purchases. Nothing, you know, consistency. It's awesome. We love it. Tell us about some of your other stock purchases, Lanny. All right, guys, get your beer, get your coffee, get your water. I'm going to try to rifle through these as quick as I can so that I don't kill right now your battery life on the YouTube uh, for the YouTube video. So, guys, I bought a share on April 6th and April 7th, so two shares total of a stock. Again, that's also on that watch list that we put out last week, Scouts Miracle Grow, ticker symbol SMG. First, I grabbed it at $118.92 because it was less than what I put out in the video, less than my watch list article as well. Then it dropped um, into the 117. So I grabbed another share at 117.50. So in total, two shares bought for Scott's Miracle Grow, $236, adding about $5.28 in forward income at a yield of a, just over 2.2 to 2.25%. Love it. As we said, you put your money where your mouth is. That's exactly right. But there were three companies on your watch list. That was one of them. Tell us about that second company that was on your watch list and, and what happened this week. Well, I we already got MDU. I already told you guys that earlier. So to round out That's and hit right. that I forgot MDU thing. was the third one. My bad, everybody. Whoops. That's right. I, I was able to grab Cummins, ticker symbol CMI, also on April 6th. Grabbed them at $197.90 added $5.80 in forward income at a yield of 2.93%. But guys, they're trading right now under 195. So again, still on the watch list, still looking to buy this stock potentially. And I think I got somebody here on this Zoom video that might be buying them as well. Oh, I, me? Yeah, this week, uh, coming week, I'm probably going to be adding some shares as that price continues to fall. So again, no, I'm just pumped up. 197 is a great price for Cummins, Lanny. Nice job there. But guys, we weren't done yet. My wife and I, we weren't finished yet. Um, in fact, Starbucks, you know, Howard Schultz kind of making a lot of news right now. 
because he's back as the CEO, I think for the third time now, trying to lead Starbucks into greater territory here. There's it a lot of like union a, fights right now. But yeah, like go a, ahead. One of those WWE bits where the, the old wrestler just keeps coming back for another appearance, another title run on the road to WrestleMania. Just yeah, Howard yeah. Schultz keeps coming back. Keeps coming back, Undertaker style. Keeps coming back for that one match <laughs> at WrestleMania. Um, congrats to Undertaker for the Hall of Fame. So, guys, Starbucks bought one share at eighty-two dollars a share on April seventh. It's actually under eighty-two dollars a share. So, if you're buying Starbucks stock, let us know in the comments. Add it again, one share at dollar ninety-six cents in forward income at a yield of two point three nine percent. Love building up that position as well. But wait, Lanny. There's more. You had one more purchase this week, didn't you? All right, guys. I'll talk about this later on a video as well as make a post about it with more, you know, conversation analyses to it and the rationale. Um, can't wait to do that. But I also can't wait to see Bert and his wife's year plus long summary to see how far J and J has been taken, um, you know, to the top on his portfolio. Um, so, guys, the new strategy I put in place uh, because of that dividend dilemma, I'm doing $50 automatically a day, automatically, into VOO, Vanguard's S&P 500 ETF, just putting more money in the market without thinking about it every day, not just every week, but every day automatically. So essentially $250 a week is going in to VOO, unless there's obviously a, the market's closed for a day. Fantastic, Lanny. Yeah, I mean, we won't spoil it here. We'll talk more about the strategy longer deal. I'm pumped up to talk about that as well, because it is it's a cool idea, automated investing at its finest. You know, so initially this week on April 4th, I put 250 in um, right away on Monday, because I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do. And then I was like, you know what? On Wednesday, I was like, let me get to the $50 a day. So $250 plus $150, $400, because I did Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, $50 a day. So that's what it'll be going forward. Um, but then uh, because I do some side hustling and selling online, I had an extra $20 that I also put into it. So in total, I did put $420 into VOO this week, buying just over one share, 1.015 shares in total for the week. Um, at an average stock price of $413.56, added $5.63 at a yield of 1.34%. There you go, Lanny. And obviously, Lanny here has done a lot of talking, and that's because I told you at the beginning, Lanny and his wife crushed it this week. My wife and I, not so much from a dividend investing perspective. J&J was it for us. We were quiet this week only invested $352.39 in dividend stocks, adding $8.48 in income, yield 2.41%. So that was it from there. We also purchased on the side, we've been buying up a FinTech company. I'll save that one for a later post, but we added $400 in that company. Um, so feel free to try and guess it in the comment section if you really care that much. If not, look forward to future posts on our blog about it. That was it for us, Lanny. Why don't you summarize your purchases for the community? Sure, guys. In total, during the week of April 4th, again, building that passive income stream on that journey to financial freedom, putting every dollar we can to work, literally almost every dollar we possibly can. We put in $1,649.30 this week, almost an all-time here on this video, I'm sure. Um, added $39.77 in forward income. Yields a little bit lower than I'm used to because I'm not buying the 5% plus store capital. Um, but the yield is 2.41% overall, Fantastic. which is actually the same one as yours. Aha. Aha. Oh. Huh. Hmm. Interesting. All right, everyone. But let us know in the comment section, what stocks did you buy this week? What dividend stocks are you doing? Uh, how much did your income grow by moving cash from the sidelines into the market? And if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel. Give this video a thumbs up. Again, thank you, everybody. Let's crush it. Let's get to financial freedom. Guys, we appreciate the support. Look forward to the feedback and the comments on the stocks you bought this past week and what stocks you're buying to finish off the month of April. That was Bertha Hurt and Lanny from the Dividend Diplomats. Over and out.